I'm one of these people as well that believes everything happens for a reason. But when things start to feel completely out of your control, it's hard finding that reason. But um, you just have to keep going, follow your intuition, really, because everything normally does work out for the best, as it should do. Hey, it's Chris. Thanks for checking out this chat with Sadie Gibbs. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please take a second today. It's free. Click that subscribe button down below because the goal, as you know, vague goals get vague results, is a million subscribers. As you can see, we've, we've got a little ways to go. But with your help, I know we can do this. Well, here we go. Sadie, it's so good to see you. You too. Isn't this through the, through the magic of the internet, we can be speaking from one continent to another continent. It's crazy without any pausing or time delays. But at least <laughs> not for now. Don't jinx this. Yeah, thing. I know. <laughs> How's everything going in your world? Really good. Really good. Just staying positive and uh, yeah, just keep moving forward really in the direction I want to go with the fitness side because that's in my control at the moment. So just focusing on that. Rest, wrestling in the UK is pretty much non-existent at the moment i think i don't think there's any shows running online or anything at the moment so i think the wwe nxt is still going but other than that it's yeah no indies you know every time i look at your instagram i feel like very inadequate feel like i should probably be working out like 10 times harder than i'm currently working <laughs> out i mean are you yeah. are you working out seven days a week i pretty much train seven days a week sometimes yeah a majority of the time, sometimes I have to remind myself, I had a rest day in a while, and I'm like, no. <laughs> but I soon know because it catches up on me and I'm shattered. So, but no, I, it's a bit of an addiction for me, I have to say, training. What, I love were, it. You, were you always into training and working out, or did CrossFit kind of take it from here to like here? So, no, I've always been into it. I was um, mostly, a, I used to do athletics, so I did a lot of running and everything. Um, when I was at school, but obviously I did gymnastics as well, which you probably know. I'm not sure if I've told you that actually. Yeah, I did gymnastics for nearly, I think, eight to 10 years. So went from that into athletics. I've always trained. I've always been, I used to run home from school just to get some exercise and in my school shoes and my skirt. But um, yeah, I'm a fanatic. Uh, I love it. So. Yeah, I, I think I think we could see what you did in the ring and went, oh yeah, that that's a gymnast. That is those are not <laughs> always the moves oh, of a wrestler, right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's some gymnasts. Yeah, what's implemented? City in? So I'm um, we I come under London, so like Southeast London. Okay, yeah. I, I I'm I try to place accents, and I feel like your accent doesn't exactly sound like London. Yeah, people, when I was in the states, no one could work out my accent. Where does is it, it quite, come from? Have I got a strong accent then? Oh yeah, you have a you have a strong accent. Do I have a strong really? accent to you? You do. Yeah, you really do. Very American. Oh, I'm, and, I, and I'm not even American. I'm Canadian. Really? Well, well I, I think Cana Canadians I've, sound American. Yeah, I've been living here for ten years. So I and I've been on TV here for ten years. So I've kind of done what I can to like work that out of the system. But when you were here, where did people think you were from? Australia um yeah that was from I, prob I got australia the most yeah do i sound australian uh i mean to someone who maybe hasn't been to australia yeah perhaps. i wouldn't say i sound australian but um yeah no i got australian that was i think the main the main one well the interesting thing about where you live and some people like thought america though but i don't think i sound american i've had that as well yeah you, you definitely don't sound american i definitely don't yeah but the, but the interesting thing about where you live is you travel like an hour away from your, where you are and there's a completely different accent. Yeah. That, yeah. We've got so many accents in the UK. It's unreal. So the plan was for you to be living here. I actually remember speaking to you early in the year. We were both, you know, planning to move. I was going to move to LA. You were going to move to yeah. Atlanta. How many days away from moving were you before things started to get shut down? Five days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's all been I, I'm one of these people as well that believes everything happens for a reason, but when things start to feel completely out of your control, it's hard finding that reason. But um you just have to keep going, follow your intuition really, because everything normally does work out for the best as it should do. Um but yeah, five days, which tells me 
it must have been a little bit of a it wasn't meant to be yet or something because it weren't exactly a month it was literally five days I was I had my cases all in my room and was ready to go but um yeah well so take me back to before that so that was obviously mid to late March so take I'm me just back glad I didn't I'm glad I didn't sign up to the the rental because I nearly um the last time I was in Atlanta I was looking at um renting places like and I was going to sign up to one while I was out there and I'm so glad I didn't now because if I'd signed up to that I would have been tied in even if I wasn't in the states and um luckily I have a friend out who lives in Atlanta and he said I can move in with him and his missus so him and his partner which um I was doing I had a spare room so that'll always be open to me if it they've said that so if things change or whatever happens in the future who knows but um yeah I'm just so glad I didn't sign up to the the leasing of an apartment because I nearly did <laughs> well, that's that's the silver lining here. That is the silver it lining. Is. That, that was, yeah. In two different countries right now. No, exactly. Kind of would have been buggered, but um, yeah. So take me back to before COVID, where uh, AEW was flying you in from London to whatever city you guys were in? So I was going to move to Atlanta, which is where, you know, the, um, the main school is now, where all the AEW, the Nightmare Factory. And um, yeah, be training there as well. Just being around more, you know, get to be implemented more into things. And just because when you live all the way in the UK, it, like flying over, and I, I just wanted to give it 100%, I think, and just dedicate to the promotion for the duration of my contract. And uh, yeah, obviously things changed, but that was the plan. That was where my mindset was at. I'm going to dedicate 100%, if I give it my all and see how things go from there, really. But you you, you were being flown in for the shows that you were booked on. You were being flown I in. I was, yeah, it. before that the move decision, I was being flown in for the shows and just, yeah. Yeah, but and then. During that time, I had two main matches. So it's a little bit disappointing, but um, yeah, because I was, you know, I was having matches every week before I got signed. Obviously, I was in Japan and um, yeah, then when I got signed, it's two, two matches with them. So it was gutting because I didn't get to showcase my skills, I didn't feel, but yeah. Yeah, in, if this hadn't happened, and it's hard to look back. Uh, yeah. If this hadn't happened, where do you think your career would be right now if, you know, that was, that was seven months ago, if that hadn't happened seven well, months ago? in terms of being Yeah, well, I mean, AW. you would have had more television experience, you would have been Yeah, wrestling. so I think I would have been... You, you know, doing really well now. I think I would, if I was moved out there and training all the time, you know how I am with my training. So um, probably would have been living in the nightmare factory in the gym side and the ring. Um, and just, yeah, having, I guess, a lot more opportunities with them. So that was the plan. Um, but yeah, I couldn't say really. I, yeah, it's hard to, hard to think. But, um, I should, I should assume I would have been a lot more involved in the company now. Because so, I was slowly, slowly getting there with it, with being out there more. And when I decided to move, starting to feel like I was getting to know everyone, then all of a sudden, but it is what it is. It's, um, yeah. So when, you know, when COVID started getting serious and when things started shutting down, we're talking mid-March here. What's, what immediately starts going through your head? Um... Well, I heard the lockdown was happening, but I didn't. I didn't think it would be before I flew. I thought I'd be fine, to be honest. And then, in my opinion, when it happened, I thought oh, it's okay. You know, it'll be two, three months um, added on to not going. And then, obviously, it got worse and worse. And then, come August, they've let three of us go from the UK. So, yeah. But. They've kept a couple from the UK, I've noticed, though. That's the, without going into things. I've noticed there's uh, Anthony Gogo still with them as well. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a bit, bit sweet, really. It's not, it's a hard one to swallow, but it is, you know, I guess they had to cut their costs and everything. If they can't use us, it's the situation is what it is, isn't it? It's, well, we probably won't be able to fly over there until, I don't know, March next year, I think, with the States. Even that's probably earliest. 
Well, it's, Sorry, it's, it would have been, it's it's literally all a guess right now. But what, but when it, they you know when amazing. they did let you go, was it like the door is open? When the world gets back to a normal situation, we'll talk. Yeah, about it. it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it was. It was really nicely done. It wasn't said in any way. It wasn't about talent or anything like that. It was about because obviously they wouldn't sign me if they thought that. But um, it was purely based on the uncertainty of being able to get to the states and uh, yeah um. And that was the reason. And they just said, reach out when it's all uh, settled and the world's normal, which can any of us see that normality yet? Uh, yeah. So, who, knows, um, who knows when that's going to happen, right? Yeah. So that's what I mean by just taking now. I'm, I'm actually uh, looking at going into occupational therapy and everything because I do all that with my clients and uh, also been applying right into a lot of directors for film work. Um, like action kind of films and stuff because I've always wanted to do that tied in with with wrestling. I've always wanted to do the kind of stunt woman stuff as well. So I'm still keeping my sights high and just you know, yeah, staying positive and just doing what you can in this situation. Really, as I look behind you here, the sun is very quickly setting behind you. It's it's still the morning here. It's still ten o'clock in the morning here, and the sun's already nice. setting. Nice. P yeah, six p.m. here. Geez, I feel like we're gonna have to turn some lights on, or else you know we're gonna, not gonna be able to see you. Oh, in can a you second. not see me? Yeah. Oh, you know, now we can see you. Yeah. I come close. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for you guys. <laughs> so, in uh, I, I was looking at your YouTube channel, and I feel like you you're kind of uh, working a little bit of the acting in with a little bit of the wrestling. I like this. Yeah. You're showing that uh, Sadie Gibbs can do pretty much anything. I yeah, well, that's where the un the undefinable came from. I kind of I like to go for anything I put my mind to. Um, I'm one of those that kind of gets obsessed with things um, and just puts my all into it and just really sees how far I can go with what my heart's set on, you know. Um, yeah, and just give it 100%. But the the acting side, yeah, you can see that in some of my promos I've done for myself and my brand. And uh, the last one where I did, like, the end, the, uh, it was all based on, like, emotions, anxiety and fear because I, I tend to do it on things that I go through just to inspire other people. And um, this is where the site, the um, therapy comes in, the occupational therapy that I want to bring into the brand. And because mentally I've overcome so much and I just want I have a real passion for that and helping others. So that's where that that's where I'm kind of focusing at the moment. And just anything I'm overcoming, is, you know, journaling and, and inspire, I want to inspire others to do the same not like setbacks they're not there to set us back they're there to make us grow and become and get to higher heights you know and yeah. uh I don't believe the wrestling's over I just think it's massively on hold at the moment for a lot of us who aren't with a tv promotion that are allowing you to perform without an audience you know um so yeah it's just doing what what you can just stand optimistic and focused on your goal still and my goal was always to do stunt work and film work and yeah so all right so let's let's dive into this you talk about you want to help a lot of people and you've been through a lot where did yeah. this where did this start for you in terms of the the passion you know, what, with yeah, mindset what, and yeah exactly I've always, so i would say i started to develop like a a real interest in self-development when i was I was going through, I'd say, one of my worst relationship kind of things. And without going into that, that's where you really start. I guess when you get your heart broken, you can get it broken in any sort of way, like losing opportunities and, you know. Um, and I just started thinking, right, happiness isn't in others or in things or in what we do. It is internal and it's, you know, always having that purpose and that pursuit to go after and have hope in our lives, you know, every day. And I think when, um, yeah, when I started diving into that, I just found happiness without rely, like having these things around me. Oh, I've got this, I've done this, I'm doing this. And that's where the undefinable came in, where I kind of weren't defined by anything I'd done or do or, or, or who I am now because I'm not who I was three years ago, you know. So you're constantly evolving and changing and becoming a different person. So we have my thing is not to get attached to anything and not you obviously you do have your attachments i've got mine to my dogs and etc but it's not it's not allowing ourselves to be 
so defined by the people we have in our life, the things we do, and then when we lose them, we completely lose ourselves because that's where the real heartache comes in. It's when we don't really know who we are. Whereas I think if you're if you're aware of yourself and you've done a load of self development and you're at a place where you kind of whatever leaves you kind of can just sit back and go okay what have I learned from this and mm. you know how can I go forwards in in a new relationship or with better perceptions and you know and not make the same mistakes because we all make mistakes and uh yeah I just I'm not quite there yet with it all understood but in terms of where I've gone the law of attraction and the secret that book really transformed me and how I perceived things and and that's when I started wrestling, when I started reading all those books and everything. I, I kind of exercised the law of attraction and it did all happen. I said, I'm going to do this in two years. I'm going to do this then and I'm going to be here then. And everything I kind of said came into my life and it happened somewhere or another, you know. Yeah. Um, whichever crazy path it was, it, it, it worked. So that's why I do believe in everything that happens for a reason because – you know, when I came away from bodybuilding and all the figure comps, I was like, who am I? And that's when I was like, what am I going to do now? And and uh, I honestly didn't know. And then my life all fell together. And that's where Undefinable, the amazing grace, just having grace in your journey. And, yeah, I just think it's, yeah, I, that's I'm just real passionate about all that side of things and really not getting attached or defined by what we do because, if that's why I'd never just say, like when people say to me, you know, oh, you're a wrestler. And I'm like, no, I'm Sadie. Um, you know, I'm this. So, yeah, I do wrestle. Um, I don't like, I get really, because especially with wrestling, I never wanted to get attached. Because if you get injured and you're told you can never wrestle again or, you know, because, you know, how dangerous wrestling can be. I mean, sure, yeah. especially all the flips and, you know, you can, you might be put out and then, then what? You know, you're completely at a, so I kind of always wanted to send a, my brand around being more than just what I do and yeah um but I yeah that's where I'm at at the moment just figuring well, just figuring stuff out you are speaking but, uh, my language right now because I'm all about self-development I'm all about oh I love it today better than yesterday and yeah you know, there's, there's a couple quotes for me that I always go back to but one of the biggest ones is when Tony Robbins says what you focus on is how you feel I love Tony Robbins He's, and, and, yeah. I mean, and there's positivity and there's negativity in every situation and every day. Yeah. And it's so easy, especially right now with everything that's you going just on. Summed, you just summed it up. It's all about how you feel. How you feel creates your life at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, you, you just have to focus on feeling good and doing the things that are going to allow you to feel better so you can create the life you want to create. Because you can't create the life you want feeling low and sorry for yourself and all those things. It's just You're just going to end up in that downward circle of negativity bringing those around you down all the time and yeah it's just not the person I want to be so I'm just I, I just focused on becoming who I want to be um and that's not to say I don't miss wrestling I miss it big time I you know I love wrestling I love the rip performing I love everything about it um but I never made it my life you know I never made it until I was going to move which scared the if I'm going to beat this out but it scared the hell out of me because I was actually deciding to give up everything that I built about me my brand fitness everything that kind of was all my little things that kept me focused and I was putting everything into commitment committing to that you know and it, it did scare me because I thought oh, if that goes then what and you know where it's like having your safety nets as well um so yeah it's just yeah I'm I'm happy with what was where I'm going at the moment, and I'm yeah. just trying to figure things out. So like, as we all are, I think a lot of people might look at you know you right now and go, I, I could I could never do what Sadie does. Look at look, she's incredible. She's in incredible shape. She's <laughs> a great mindset. She's a pro wrestler. Who was Sadie Gibbs ten years ago before all of this? Um, I'd say lost. Lost. Uh, I could never stick at one thing. I was always bouncing from one thing to another, trying to find happiness in relationships and always chasing love in external things, um, which attracted the wrong relationships. And as well as being completely terrified, like I just said, of commitment to anything, anyone. So I probably caused a lot of the uh, 
the bad relationships myself as well. Um, so yeah, I would say to sum up, I was I was probably a lost soul searching for a purpose, and that's why when I found wrestling, I I thought it was wrestling that kind of gave me that grace and made me feel alive again, and it did. But it was actually the person I started to become, and the, all the books I started to read, and I was just really searching within myself and finding ex- internal happiness, you know. And that's where I'm still on that journey now. That's why I think it hasn't completely. I was I've, I've been low for a good couple of months with losing AW because obviously you do it, it is an opportunity that I was really excited about and. You do have to figure things out again, like we all have at the moment with COVID and it's a lot of uncertainty. But um, I kind of didn't crash and burn within myself. I still kept my mindset. So my mind was still stronger than my emotions and my my end goals are still there. Um, it's just I'm just on a diversion at the moment, you know. <laughs> I feel like we could so. sneak you over to America somehow. Somehow there must be a way. Put me in a, in a suitcase on a boat. No, because like <laughs> I, I just had a friend who went somewhere on vacation in Europe. So maybe you go over to there and then you travel over here. I was gonna say, um, I've gone completely blank now, and that's really bad. Um, who's it lives in France again? She's pulled. Oh, oh um, geez. Why, why have I forgotten her name? We've got a we've got a few and Helico lives in uh Spain. Yeah, he's flying over though. He's fine, isn't he? Yeah. But I think he's living in Mexico at the moment though. That's oh. why. Oh, well that changes everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's in Mexico, but oh, why have I gone blank? That's so frustrating. Don't worry, I've got the internet. Um well she's in France and I think she's gonna be coming over somehow to America. They mentioned it on I read I read about it on the internet. Anna. Shauna, that's it. Every, everyone who's watching this right now is being like, come on, guys, you knew this. I, yeah, it was there. We've just been jabbering on and my head's all. Um, yeah, Shauna. So, yeah, I think well, she's I, able I, to fly. I feel, I feel like we could get you over here somehow and then figure <laughs> stuff out. Yeah. Um, okay, it's least Yeah, you have to fly to another country, don't you? Which. I don't know what what's happening with America and where they blocked flights from, but yeah, there probably is a way. Yeah, I think. <laughs> look, and as you know, in your life, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> so as you look yeah. ahead, then you know if if this is the situation that you're in right now, you're obviously assessing the situation for. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah. What what? Where do we go six months from now? What's a year from now look like? Uh, I've actually got a few speaking events booked as well um, with universities, one in Bath. Um, so, yeah, I'm just excited to see where my path goes now because, like, as you can see, I'm massively passionate about the becoming. And uh, I think that I'm just going to see where my speaking events land me and what direction I go. And, yeah, it's just, let's see. If you go down that path, you will probably end up making so much more money than you would as a wrestler. Uh, I I just think this being a speaker and really like inspiring and motivating others is where, and that's what I loved about performing in wrestling because you touch so many people. I find it crazy how how the crowd is so emotionally connected to you. It's mental, yeah. um, and that's just from the character that you you know that you are and in the indie scene. I couldn't believe how many people I touched and life I affected. It's crazy. Um, so that's what I, that was one of the main things I loved about wrestling as well, just watching how invested the audience were in what you do and, and how connected they were. And that's what I want in the speaking events that I do. And it's, it's still, I'm still going in the direction I've always wanted to go in. I've always, even when I started wrestling, I said, I, I wanted to do the speaking events and even all my like promos were about kind of the undefinable and you know um so i'm still figuring it out though i'm not gonna i can't just sit here and wheel off what i'm about and where i'm going yet i'm still figuring it out so it, i'm gonna let it unfold on its own and yeah but well, you, um, talk about, yeah. You, you talk about how you found wrestling how did how yeah. did you find wrestling ah uh, that's the yeah so it's really, I've always been in mixed martial arts and I've always wanted to wrestle and do um, be a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu 
so it's called BJJ, it's an easier way of saying it, to be honest. Um, and I just started looking online at, like I'm always applying for things and came across like a, it was actually a match between backstage, it was Natalia and uh, the, Nikki Bella. And um, I was just like, oh my God, I want to do that. I, it just, I was just like, I want to do that, that. And I applied for a WWE tryout. And then after the tryout, after and having that discipline and everything again it just made me feel like this is what I want to do and I just went away and like I said to you I got obsessed and uh gave it gave it my all really and just yeah wanted to get to the top and I feel like I did get to where I was wanting to go I just didn't get to at the moment I haven't had the chance to kind of live out that height that I reached you know but um yeah so what, what kind of, you tried out for WWE. I'm guessing this was in the yeah. UK. What, what kind of feedback did you get from that tryout? So I got um, your everything we'd hire. We just need to go away and prove to us. So that's what I did. And um, I went away and just worked my ass off, really. Trained five times a week in wrestling, some, including my own training, the gym. I didn't let the gym go. And it'd be in between clients. And I actually took on like a social media job to give me a little bit more time because the clients were – morning and night normally and so two days a week I decided to get a social media job for a company so I could travel up to um, uh, the Midlands which was a five hour drive on a Friday to train and I did that until I found Lucha in um, Bethnal Green and then I literally lived there I was doing private lessons twice a week and joining the classes twice a week sometimes leaving the house at five and getting in at eleven and then weekends, I was being booked off. I said to myself, I want to debut in three months. And obviously, you get a lot of, uh, you're not going to be ready then and all this. But I still did it. And my debut was, uh, I did one in, because I got booked in Holland before I got my debut date um, in the UK. But then I did one with Lucha and uh, with BEW. And um, then I went to Holland. And that was all in four months of intense wrestling training. So... Wow. Yeah. It's, it's so, so obvious that, that when you get into something, you become like obsessed with this. Yeah. I just felt like it was meant to be because the bookings just started coming in and everything was going really well. Maybe I'm just good at marketing myself. I'm not sure as well. No, but, uh, no, you're really good at working <laughs> hard and finding a path yeah. to make stuff happen. Yeah. Carving your own path to get it. Yeah. To get it done. Despite all the, all the talk of, you're not going to be ready. You can't do it then. And you know, I was like, no, I feel I'm good. I'll be fine. I'll learn on the, I'll learn on the road. I'll learn as I go. <laughs> and right. I did. So I feel like you kind of skipped over the part where you're like driving five hours. Like, was that every week? I was doing that most weeks for at least a good, good mu two months. Good two months. Yeah. That was <sighs> a lot. Yeah. And then I started to get the train because the driving was just Friday nights. Not good. <laughs> it's traffic. And, uh, Yes, the state to get the train. But um, it was known as the, you know, politi political wise, it was known as the best train school to be at if you wanted to climb that ladder. So, um, yeah. So how did you get discovered by AEW? And, and who was it that you got on their radar? So I went to Japan and obviously I had to come back early. Um, my granddad passed in that time. So came back early and something was said on Twitter. Um which caused a lot of um, exposure in terms of both sides. I, I mean, I didn't, it, it got to a point where I don't react to things easily, especially online and anyone that's hating or doing whatever. For me, it's just a matter of, um, you know, just, it just doesn't concern me. I'm not bothered. But um, when it came to what I'd gone through with losing the first person in my family, really, and it was a sensitive subject. I just responded gracefully, in my opinion, and without, you know, with integrity and all those things. And um, it just went viral. And uh, from that, the Young Bucks commented under the post, and then I had an email, and we'd like to sign you. Yeah, summing it up. So it was, it was an intense coming back from Japan, dealing with grief and everything, and then getting signed. You know, honestly, it's been a crazy two years. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that story is amazing because it kind of went from worst case scenario to like best case scenario. Like yeah, that. and it's 
really hard to deal with those because you're still dealing with like it was it was a strange it's been yeah and uh, I, I also i know though that you were on their radar before because you did like a very perfect sasuke special i i think it was the sasuke that probably uh got me the exposure i always say that because i was uh, still for me that's my little legacy because i'm the only uh female that's ever done that um in professional wrestling and i did my research to see if any female had done that when i was in the indie scene and i was like i'm going to do that and it's funny because i had a mental block going backwards in gymnastics and that's what caused me to drop from elite and give up um in gymnastics and um, because i just started jumping back on my head because i just developed this mental block going backwards mm. and um yeah and then all of a sudden my you know 10 20 was it 15 years down the line i'm doing a sasuke special over ropes i'm tucked back in over ropes that's a, um, so the first time you did the sasuke how scared were you i wasn't nah because that's a terrifying yeah, this, move to, to watch I, is, I mean every time i see is, will osprey do it i'm like that that doesn't even seem possible yeah i weren't scared it was more adrenaline and just performance really i just thrived off the performance so it weren't the fear there was no fear in the actual move it was more i don't even know but i, I wouldn't say i'm scared i've never been scared trying a new move ever um <laughs> i'm kind of like if this is going to get the crowd going you know it's going to create a good show i'm going to do it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's. Are you saying yeah. you did it for the first time, like live on a show? Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, I literally practiced round of tuckbacks in like again joining them because I hadn't joined it for a long time since gymnastics. So I was practicing that in the gym, and uh, I was like, "I'm doing this in a show tonight." And I told the guys, you know, this is the first time I'm going for it, so just catch it on your arm, just. If I get caught up in the ropes, you know, just leave me and I'll deal with whatever happens there. <laughs> but um, as long as I weren't hurting others, that was, you know, I didn't mind. And I did the court screw Sasgate. I was told by the guys, one of the guys that was kind of got us over there, I think it was an American guy. Um, he just said, if you could court screw the Sasgate, that would be crazy. So the next show, I just went for it. Yeah. And uh, it was actually very good. I was actually really pleased when I watched it back. So. I'm very pleased with that move. That yeah, that was a big accomplishment for me. Yeah, no, it, it's a big accomplishment for anybody. <laughs> you know, you keep, you keep a lot of what you're saying keeps coming back to the word grace, and yeah, you know, it's not a word that we hear a lot in our daily lives. So, mm. for you, what does grace mean? For me, it's just going with the flow and just whatever instinct instinctively comes to you, just having grace to you know follow out that the path that you need to achieve it without um being and when you lose things as well it's not being stuck on them and bitter on them it's just going okay let's take grace with this so you're just kind of saved by grace i got it tattooed on my arm and uh, you follow through with your faith of yourself you know that you know this obviously wasn't meant to be because it gives me nothing but anxiety now and it makes me uncomfortable and I want to follow one where I, you know, the anxiety starts to go again and I start to feel happy and free. I'd say, I'd say grace is just being free. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's for me. It's just feeling free and uh, not trapped and by anxiety because it cripples you when you just feel fear all the time and yeah, and just yeah. uncertainty. For as fit as you are, for as much as you love CrossFit, have you thought about becoming a CrossFit Games competitor now? I've had that a couple of times from people. Why don't you go for the CrossFit Games? Yeah. They're another league. I mean, I'm I'm good at CrossFit, but they're another league. No, no, no. Hold on. I mean, You're better than good <laughs> at CrossFit, okay? I, mean, I wouldn't say I'm better than good. I, uh, I'm, I mean, I could be very good at CrossFit, but um, I honestly just really love the, the training and you know how I push myself through limits every time I train um but I've had a couple of people say to me right now you can focus on your CrossFit training go click and I'm like oh. so no I know I've got the mentality to it but that is a they are incredible athletes but, the, but think about it maybe if you can't get back in the ring for six months maybe it's 12 months think mm -hmm. of how much better of a CrossFit fit competitor you'd be six months 12 months from now yeah uh 
I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I could. I, oh, she's I starting of, to think about it. I can see the wheels turning. I don't know. I, I used to think that it's, um, yeah, I mean, I would love to start competing in it, but it's, I wouldn't want to put the pressure on it because it's something I really enjoy. And it's, it's kind of one of them things where I don't have the pressure of being better than other people. I just do it to be good, just to feel good and, you know, I enjoy it. And I, I think as soon did, as... The I thing with me is as I put pressure on things. I did like, CrossFit for about a year, a few years ago. And, yeah. And I know that when you go in there and you do the the WAD, the workout of the day, it is competitive. Yeah. And I know you're, you know, you're you're competing yeah. against men, you're competing against women, you're competing against young people, old people. And I would yeah. imagine if we went to your CrossFit gym, you are probably the one who wins the WAD every single day. Mostly, yeah. I make sure I'm winning, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like not to win, but <laughs> yeah, I've had a few injuries lately though as well, so it's 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 set me back, but I'm slowly getting back into it. So you probably look at some of the you know competitors, uh, you know some of the times of the people in the CrossFit game. Yeah. You look at them and go, yeah, I could do that. I mean, I, I could I could definitely do it, but I was um, I want my twenty. I'm still young. I'm 29 next year, but. I say that it's like a lot of the people training to get to the CrossFit Games now. I know they have, they do have like the 25 and over and all, you know. Uh, who knows? Maybe one day. But at the moment, it's not, it's not in my instincts to go for that. So, yeah. Well, right now you're spending a lot of time training other people. That's that's your day job right now, right? Yes. Yeah. Just yeah, building an online fitness band and just training people one to one. Oh, which is, yeah. I mean, that, I, I, it's probably pretty great to train with someone like you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we, uh, I, I, I know that you have a lot of tattoos, and with everything that's been going on this year, which tattoo currently means the most to you or speaks the most to you? Uh, my one on my back. So I've got one down my spine because obviously it's just, it's just fine. It's just fine. And, that hold you up and keep you strong. So I got it down the spine. It says, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue to count. So that relates now. Oh, that's so, say that one more time. That's so good. <laughs> success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue to count. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. You, so that's, you, that's my, probably my favorite. Are you hopeful that you can be back in a wrestling ring, maybe even just yeah, training in the next few weeks, months? Yeah, I'm hope. I mean, my main goal now is because uh, obviously I'm I'm living back home at the moment. So my main goal now is to move out, which I'm moving out in two weeks. So I'm going to be renting a just a really nice little place. So move out, and then I can start again focusing on training. And at the moment, I've kind of taken a step back on myself and focusing on my own goal and just putting it into all my business at the moment. Um, but yeah, as soon as I can focus on myself as well as that again, I'll be back to that. Yeah, I'm already in touch with um, uh, I don't know if you know the the, the, the Lucha School. So Greg Burridge, I'm in touch with him, and I'll be back training there. So yeah, yeah, I, I think it, it it's like we're driving. You're out for a bit, but as soon as you hit the ropes again, it'll just I'll be off. I'll be back. I think I'll be bruised for a bit because <laughs> you you get conditioned to it, don't you? And I'll go back to it. I'll have all rope marks on my back and. But the back bump's going to feel like a car crash again. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be fine. I'll get used to it. Has any part of this year discouraged you from wrestling at all? Uh, I wouldn't do say discouraged. I'd say whether I'm looking at kind of taking that step, like I said, in everything I've done and going more into the the – the acting side of performing because as I said I wasn't a huge wrestling fan when I started wrestling that wasn't the reason I started training I mean I know that's a lot of people's story but that's not mine the reason I've always wanted to be a performer I've been a natural performer since I was a kid I've always showed off and I've always I've just always loved performing so it's whether I want to take the next step in that performing side and start doing movies and films I know that's another hard path but like I said when there's a will, there's a way, and um, I'm already in touch with directors. I've got a phone call with one who's just got a film on Netflix. So um, it's just creating those connections in order to get there. So 
yeah, I believe I've, I've got the, I can, I can do it, and I would be able to do those sort of films, and I really want to give them a go and see. So I'm not sure. I'm not discouraged. I still want to do the the performance. Is still a massive part of where I'm going. I'm just uh, trying to take a next step at the moment. If that makes sense. Yeah, and well, look, um, I, mean, I think that there's a lot of parallels between acting and wrestling, and I don't, I don't mean the performance of it. I mean, it's the very path to get there. Yeah, they're very, they're very intertwined. I think, and uh, it's, it's just whether you can, you can take that next step and really go the full. Yeah, and uh, it's very, very, yeah. I think a lot of wrestling, the main bit that really draws me in is the acting side of it. When I see the people doing the acting side, I, I'm, I love it. And that's what gets you in touch with the character. You can't really get invested in wrestling if you don't know the character, I think. Um, so the, the attitude here, I, I bloody love. I could I sit watching all the old stuff um, a lot because I just think they the characters were so... You knew the character. You knew what they were going to be like. You knew what you was watching. And that was, yeah, the characters was everything. Who, I what, think are it, some, what are some old films, some classic films that you just love? Uh, in what genre are we talking? Well, you tell me. You, you... I'm um, a massively, I love action um, films. I'm not very good with remembering the names and all of that um, kind of thing. I've got a memory like a goldfish. Um, but if I saw it, I could, like the Rocky Balboas, I could watch them over and over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love Fast and Furious as well. All of those. Um, what's a good fight film that I love? <sighs> Try and list off some really good, like, street, with all the street fight. And I was saying to uh, one of my friends the other day, like, do you ever get the urge to just go down an alley and start, like, fighting? Oh. Like, but, but, like, street fighting, like, throwing yeah. headbutts, knees, and throwing people into walls. That's all the stuff that I would... I think I really for me, it. John Wick immediately comes to mind when you say like great fight sequences like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fight sequ fight choreography is definitely where I want to go now, and that will help with my wrestling anyway because it's the psychology behind it that I always found the most difficult grasping, to be honest. Um, like why you're throwing the hits, why you're ducking a line, and while you're while you're doing you know that side of it was that took me the longest to grasp i was just all about the moves and it was to be honest nothing to do with the moves what um, what match of yours are you most proud of at this stage of your career uh my favorite match and it was rehearsed like we we say rehearsed but we've gone over it and luckily i trained with the guy that i had the match it's a lot of my intergender matches that i absolutely love i love hard hitting and just really going for it and connecting like once you connect and there's no when you're in the ring and you have a match and you connect there's nothing else like it there honestly isn't but i would say it's with beyond Borman. he's uh he's he's not a massively known wrestler but he's great in the indies and uh he's an incredible wrestler but that match for me still i still post clips now when i'm he's 85 kilos and i gorilla pressed him and it was uh yeah, so that match was crazy. Everything was in it, and but at the same time, there was a lot of psychology behind it. I felt my character was, yeah, I really had my character nailed in that match. So, hmm. you know what? I think a match that I think a lot of people would want to see, and when I say this, it might make sense to you, is you versus Jordan Grace. Yeah, uh, you, you talk yeah. about Grace, which obviously makes a lot of sense, but also you guys are both, you know, you're very physical, you're very strong, yeah. and I think that that match could be amazing. Yeah, I mean, definitely Jordan Grace, Tessa Blanchard, and um, I actually really wanted to have a match with Chris Statlander as well. Well, so those three for me, in terms of physicality and uh, wrestling style, was like my goal match. And, well, yeah, I would love to wrestle those three, definitely. I think you've got yeah. the most important thing here moving forward. The most important thing you have is a great mindset. It's just, yeah, it's mind. It's all mindset. And if, if you know, I, I was in a negative place for a while. Don't get me wrong. I was frustrated, angry, just. Uh, I'd say I was a little bit bitter, and I hate to say that because I hate that. Um, and I just didn't like who I was. And for me, if you can't look in the mirror and say I'm proud of you, you know, you're doing a good job, and just 
say like at least three affirmations about yourself, then anything you're judging on other people and saying about other people is clearly a reflection of you because mm. you, you should be able to like yourself initially. Once you like yourself, you can't say anything nasty about other people because I don't find myself saying nasty things about other people ever. And uh, until I was in that place and I started to get bitter and I was going, you know, you get jealous and you start saying things and I was becoming one of that. And it's so easy to go that way. And I'm going to say, be completely honest, it's so easy for anyone to go in that direction because it's fear, it's anxiety, it's I'm not good enough. I'm, you know, it's all those things. And a lot anyone can go that way without a mindset and just without kind of just sitting back and looking at things in a bigger perspective and just not, yeah. And, and then you start to feel that love coming back into your life and you just start to feel happier and your relationships improve and everything starts to improve around you again. And then you're like, okay, it's me that creates all this you know when you start to get in that bad place it's it's me it's my feelings it's my emotions and you're in control of that that is something you're in control of feeling good and uh that's where i'm i'm at at the moment just yeah. really doing things and just trying to feel good every day because you know it's at the moment with the current situation of the world it's easy for us all to wake up and look at all the traumas of the world and you know what's bad and this and how am i going to do this i can't do this now and i've lost this and and just how's that going to set you up to go for what you want in six months' time? It's not. So, yeah, without going on the tandem, it's just about feeling good. And uh, that's where I'm at. I just I feel happy again now and I'm doing the things that's in my control and not thinking about all the things that could go wrong, really. You, yeah. you said when, when you first got to AEW, you, you started to doubt yourself a little bit. What, what was yeah. it? Why, did, why would you start to doubt yourself? I, I don't know. Once I, I, I cannot, I can't grasp. Like this is why I say sometimes when you enter a nut, the next chapter of your life, the past chapter makes sense. In the moment, it still doesn't make sense. Like I was flying, I was so certain this was the path I wanted, and where I was going was the right direction. And then I got signed, and I had hesitations to move in. I was fearful. I was worried, and. I just started to feel like overwhelming anxiety all the time. That wasn't me. And um, yeah, like I know I always got nervous when I performed, but the anxiety actually overtook uh, like the two performances I got. I just felt so overwhelmed with anxiety and fear that I couldn't be the performer that I am either um, in those two matches. I really didn't feel like I did myself any justice. Like when I was in Japan, I really was just – the performing side I was on like I, I'm happy with every performance I did in Japan and uh yeah I, I really don't know where I started to doubt myself yet I haven't figured that out but I think it was more so um I don't know I, I don't know yet I can't figure that out but there was an element of doubt I think it's normal once you've got to level up you kind of reached a, a stage where you're around like really cool people and just professional you know, people you really respect and you're a little fish again and you're like, okay, I need to level up to be able to be on these people's level and just, you know. Yeah. You start to question yourself, which is good because yeah. then you start to grow. So I think it was just an element of growth and when I started to doubt myself and I need it, I've got, I still had a lot of growing to do to be at that point, I think. And in why I didn't probably feel 100% ready um, to be performing in front of a TV audience. Um, so I was thrown in the deep end maybe before I was ready to swim, maybe, in that kind of environment. And uh, that's how you learn, though, in my opinion. I've, you, that is how you learn. And that's why I wanted to come out to train because I knew, you know, you're never the best wrestler you can be anyway. You've always got things to learn and things to improve, hence why I started MMA as well, to improve my the realistic side of how I fight and that aggression I wanted to bring to my character. Um, but yeah, I think it was more, I knew I had a lot of groundwork to do to be where I wanted to go in that promotion. Maybe. Yeah. So I lost the certainty in myself. Um, you know, which is, I had Japan, Japan. is Japan still an option for you? Um, They're wrestling I, there again. I loved, I wouldn't go back to stardom. Um, I've, I know it's a great promotion. I love their I love wrestling, but in terms of the professionalism and uh, the humanity, 
in terms of grievance. When I said I, you know, my granddad's passed and I was broken and was sitting there watching Wales in a, I know this sounds silly, but, you know, the, two days ago I lose my granddad and then we're going to a, a theme park to watch Wales jump around. It's the last thing I want to be doing. And I just bawled out in tears and um, I get emotional talking about it, to be honest. God, <laughs> um, but I remember that day, and it was it was really I can't believe I got emotional. And uh, when and actually it took a lot for me to go tell the uh, promoter that I've got to go home, like I can't be here anymore. And he tapped my leg, and he said, um, "No, no, you stay, business." And I and I just thought, because you know, political ways, I knew I was going to get shit on for going home. And uh, I always do right by me anyway. It's not, like I said to you, it's not about if, if a career makes you feel like that, leave it, in my opinion. And yeah. that, for me, was I just booked, I changed my flight myself and I went. And I would have loved to have said goodbye and done it the right way to all the girls and been respectful because I know that con their culture and everything's all about respect and it's an amazing culture. Um, but for me, that was that wasn't respectful to me or or my family or myself you know and uh yeah it's a hard time <laughs> see how much it means to you even now talking about yeah <laughs> now thank you for sharing that story i yeah, i didn't yeah. expect this to, I to get emotional. emotional i didn't yeah i didn't expect to that was weird but uh i guess when you go back it just you realize and it made me god it made me strong yeah but um yeah. That was a uh, hard, yeah. Japan was a, a difficult time for me, but. But it, it sounds like I you also, you grew a ton it. as yeah. a performer. You grew a ton as a person there. Yeah, and I channeled it in the ring. <laughs> yeah, so it was fine. Um, I loved performing out there. I loved the style and I'd love to go back, but definitely for a different promotion. Right. As we wrap things up right now, you mentioned yeah. you love reading books. We're definitely on the same wavelength yeah. here. Let me make every day better than the last day. What book yeah. do I need to read this week? Uh, cool. My new favorite one. I'll get it up. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I listen to audiobooks when right. I'm driving. and things. It's just an easier way because I'm on the road a lot. So. Yeah, me too. It's called... The sub, the subdued art of not giving a fuck. That was one oh, of my favorites. I love that. I love that book, Mark Manson. Yeah, have you have you listened to it? I've, I've read that book several times. That book is oh, completely well, changed my life. The subtle art of not giving. A yeah, fuck. that's. It's kind of got the different. It's still empowering, but in a different way. It it relates to a different perspective, which I loved. To the and, secret. And for anyone I'm listening to this that's going, oh, it's it's super easy to not give an F. It's like, no, no, that's not what this book is about. This book yeah. is about focusing the, your attention on the things that matter rather than yeah, I mean, throwing yeah. you know, your Fs around for stuff that doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah. You should still give a fuck, but not for the things that you shouldn't give a fuck about, basically. Sorry, F. Swear. No, no. <laughs> I just was trying to not swear. <laughs> you can. Yeah. And uh, The New Earth. Have you listened? Have you read that? New Earth. Okay, this is new. I will write this one down. Eckhart Tolle. I'm Eckhart not sure Tolle, if I'm reading yeah. that right. Did I say that right? You did, yeah. Eckhart Tolle. Oh, good. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really good. And there's one, so you've got the New Earth, but there's one just before that that you write, so you should listen to before that, and it's called Entering the Now. Is that also Eckhart Tolle? Yeah, listen to that one before the New Earth. Because okay. It's, there we go. But yeah, they're, they're really good. Yeah. You know, I didn't. You got me I, all emotional. What you done to me? <laughs> what a, what an hour we've spent together. We have. It's been good. But yeah, uh, I, I've, I, I've I, let I, a lot of my story out that I haven't spoke about before. So I'm, no, feeling, I, 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 I'm in a place of feeling more open now as well. Like just, I think if you're going to be successful in anything, it's being who you are. So. um like I said, I wasn't a massive wrestling fan when I started. I became a wrestling fan as I started doing it and I gained respect for the sport um, itself. So I've always been afraid to say that because I felt you had to be a fan to kind of be involved like a massive fan. And that always feared me to say that. But it's I just love performing and I love the 
the connection you gained with the audience and it, it like I said it did set me on fire and really get it I found grace in it so well the the best is yet to come it is I'm not I'm definitely not done but uh it's too much passion in me to to not channel it anywhere and share okay. it <laughs> I didn't I didn't know what to expect from this conversation but this has you know been more than I could have possibly expected uh yeah. it's amazing hearing your mindset your attitude your passion it just kind of oozes through you not just with wrestling but with everything that you do you have so much passion yeah. that you throw t- in into that thing yeah trying <laughs> you're doing it so yeah. Sadie Thank you. I'm excited to see you back in a ring, whether it's there or whether it's here, or maybe it is somewhere else in Japan. So I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited for what the future has to hold for you. Yeah, hopefully. We'll see. So thank you. You too. It'd be nice to hear what's going on with you as well. What's your well, next? You're, you're, uh, yeah. when, when you're able to come to America, we'll meet up and do this in person. That'd be good. <laughs> thank you so Perhaps. much, Sadie. Yeah, good luck in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, I like your belt in the back there. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, I feel like a real champion when I give myself a belt. (laughs) Did you get that made? It was a gift, yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. But I mean, it's fitting. You are on the Chris Van Vliet show right now. We have a belt that tells you that. Yeah. I definitely didn't expect this interview to get so emotional, but I'm really thankful to Sadie for being so open and so honest here and really thankful to you for watching this and for subscribing. And it's so hard to not be motivated. It's so hard to not be inspired after listening to her story. And I just love how she looks for the silver lining in every single situation. Even if it looks like a negative situation on the surface, if you dig a little bit deeper, maybe you can find a silver lining. Maybe you can find some positivity in there. And as The Rock once told me in an interview, sometimes the best things in life are the things that don't happen. And I think with Sadie, she just has this incredible mindset that she's going to be super successful in whatever it is that she wants to apply herself to, whether that's wrestling or acting or stunt work or CrossFit, whatever it happens to be, it's all up here and she has it. So I hope you appreciate this interview. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we'll see you on Thursday for a great chat with Chavo Guerrero Jr.